I remember being a young boy on our farm in upstate New York and having a chance to grow up in a rural setting. And re more recently, I've had a chance to raise our own kids. Uh, first, we had a son, and more recently, since then, we've had four girls. Um, when I was growing up on our farm, I really wanted to have a chance. Um, we, we grew everything on our farm, and I had a, a, uh, everything from uh, pears and apples to peas and carrots to maple syrup and even wine. Um, and so when we started our family, I wanted our kids to have that same experience. And I remember very clearly planting potatoes in our garden at home growing up, having the chance to patiently nurture them through the season, and then harvesting them and being delighted to see that there was actually potatoes under the ground. And I brought them with a lot of pride up to the house and my mother would prepare them and serve them to us. And I remember that this really bought me into where food came from. And so when we settled down, our, we planted our own garden and we started our own orchard and more recently we even added six hens and a grumpy rooster who loves to torture my four-year-old daughter. And when you look at, um, when you look at uh, the way that we, are, when you go around and you meet other adults, you have a chance to hear their stories about connecting to food when they're younger. And almost everybody has a story, whether it was gardening with a grandparent or traveling uh, to visit a relative's farm. And there was a powerful connection we had with food and where it came from. But as we, as we move forward and things change so rapidly, oh, there we go, um, we've, we live in a more urban environment and we're surrounded less and less by beans and corn and more and more by concrete and steel. And so we've lost our connection to food. It's become really, eating has become a transactional experience. And from this change and this, and this disconnect that we have now with food, we've also seen the effects on our health. And many of you have seen the statistics. Over 100 million Americans are obese. That's one third. These numbers have increased more and more rapidly among minorities and children as well. In 1960, the average household spent almost 17% of their income on food and less than 5% on their health. Fast forward to, 19, uh, to 2010, and those numbers have changed dramatically. Our food has gotten cheaper, yes but the cost has gone up. Healthcare has more than tripled since then. So you have to think that while we, our food has gotten cheaper, we, are, we seem to be paying a larger price in the long run. From a dollar perspective, we're spending over $150 billion a year to care for our citizens in this country with, to treat obesity and weight-related issues. That's projected to double to more than $300 billion. And that's not in 2050. That's not even in 2025. That's by 2018. Embedded in all these figures, the real sad story is that our children are suffering as well. More than 23 million, one-third of all children, 60 million children approximately now, are obese or overweight. In many urban environments, that number approaches two-thirds. One other thing I'd like to share is something I saw recently that our own government stated that the age bracket of 17 to 24-year-olds 
30% of them are unfit and unsuited due to weight-related issues to serve our military. I find this really alarming because that is the age group that just exited childhood. And we are seeing the consequences of not investing in healthy food due to that. In this country, full of resources and wealth and medical know-how, how can we be in a situation where, for the first time in our nation's history, our children, my children, and their generation is projected to live a shorter life expectancy than me and the parents. Now, all this is really scary stuff, but the good news is there are things we can do. We can make change, and we can focus on saving the 20%. Those 20% are the 60 million children that live in this country. Those 20% are our future. They are who we will invest in. And good things are happening from the school lunch reform bill that was passed in 2010. Yes, they still do pass some bills. To Michelle Obama ripping out the lawn of the White House and putting in a garden to inspire kids about where food comes from on a national level. To the My Plate nutrition diagram that replaces that food pyramid that we remember so much growing up and emphasizes healthy fruits and vegetables. But there's so many more challenges that are complex, and it's more than just providing healthy food to kids. We have to educate them and inspire them about eating healthy. How many of you remember your kids, your parents saying to you when you were a kid, eat your peas, and how effective or not that was? And so really what we need to do is get their buy-in, and get them invested. So I thought about what I could do. Using my own background growing up on a farm and my own skill set, and we went out and we planted school gardens. And we used kind of the same mentality that kids are so accustomed to now with HDTV and 3D and action-packed excitement. And we took traditional education and we made it exciting and fun to inspire kids and reconnect them to food. And the school gardens were successful. The kids, many of whom were in urban areas who had never even held a real tomato before and experienced real food. They were so accustomed to eating boxed and bagged and wrapped and packaged food that they didn't even understand it. But now they had a chance to connect to it and dig in the dirt. And there were successes, but there was also setbacks. The school gardens were difficult. They were a challenge logistically. Uh, there was a lot of maintenance and watering uh, and weeding, of course. And they were at their height in the summer when the kids weren't there to experience the excitement of the garden and the bounty that came from it. And so just like anything else, you never know when you're going to have an idea hit you. Sometimes it's in the most unexpected time. And for me, I was on a family vacation in the spring a few years ago. And I said, we live in this age of mobility. Why can't we have the school garden be mobile? or better yet, a farm on wheels. And so I called up my brother, who was an auto designer. He got all the artistic talent in the family. And he sketched this, literally. You can actually see a red wine stain on there. And we focused on the modular component of it. We wanted to be able to take this to schools. And we, we started to think, can this be a reality, creating a mobile farm? And by having it be a modular, we were able to create what is plug and play. So every day when this came back to the farm from being at the schools and kids having a chance to actually pull things and not get yelled at for doing this and touching that and making a mess, we could pull out those bins and replace them. So maybe one day the kids are learning about root crops and the next day they're learning about pollinators. There were also many other considerations. This is a, a further iter iter iteration as we design this. We needed the garden beds to be at a height that a six, seven, eight-year-old could comfortably garden and experience that feeling. We needed uh, the, this to be able to also have 
a mobile kitchen that rolled off the back, as you can see. We needed to be able to have it fit into a 50-minute schedule for a teacher in their busy day that they have. And we also needed it to work alongside the state standards for curriculum and to fit into what teachers were teaching too. And so, instead of launching our school gardens that spring, we launched what we called the Farm Explorer. The name connotates a connection back to where food comes from, the farm, and it provided an opportunity for kids to explore the magic that gardening and tasting healthy, fresh food can have. The tagline for the Farm Explorer was grow, cook, eat, and inspire, which creates the complete cycle and the big full picture for a child and closes the loop from seeding to eating in a way that they could relate to and understand and be inspired about. And so, instead of telling you about the Farm Explorer, I'm going to have you, in the spirit of the program, I'm going to show you what the Farm Explorer is like in the eyes of a nine-year-old. I have my nine-year-old's hat on for visual effect. Man, class is so boring today. At least we get to go outside now. I don't know what this Farm Explorer thing's all about. Farms are like so old school. Wow, that's quite a rig. That thing is awesome. What? We get to get dirty? This is cool. Uh, wow, look at that. That's a I shouldn't have prob probably pulled out that carrot. Oh, you mean I can eat this? But it's dirty. Oh, dirt's not poisonous? Boy, these are cool worms. I wonder if they'll notice if one's missing. I'd love to take one home and put it in my sister's bed. <laughs> Ew, green stuff. I've, I've heard all about green stuff. That stuff is nasty. And we... Now, I don't know what basil is. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know what pesto is. But eating it with cucumbers, that green stuff? No way. That's crazy. But look, wow, Johnny's trying it. Okay, well... If Johnny's trying it, maybe I'll try it too. Well, this stuff's actually pretty good. It's actually, it's better than ranch dressing. I love this stuff. Wow, a blender bike, that's cool. I want to ride on that. I can't believe they put spinach in this smoothie. This actually tastes awesome. I can't wait for the next time the Farm Explorer comes. So the blender bike is always a showstopper, but it's really not about the gimmicks. It's about creating an opportunity to connect kids and taking the time to have them have a real experience with real food and connecting the dots for them around what food is and how it relates to their health in a dynamic way. I know that all of the issues that we have with the food system seem cumbersome and large, and they are, but we can do small things like a farm on wheels, to re-engage kids in a fun environment that connects them and engages them in a way that can create lifelong habits of eating healthy food. To me, it's a little bit like learning a foreign language. You can do it when you're older, but it's harder. Kids still do have an open mind. And if we take the time, we can actually get them to buy in and invest in it. Not every one of these kids will like what they taste, but a lot of them do, and even more of them actually do try it. So we can save that 20% if we invest in our kids. That is our future. And if we do invest in them, we can change the trends that are so alarming. And we can have our next kids, generation of kids, grow up as the healthiest generation yet in our nation. Thank you.